Um, tell me some of the um, major changes that have occurred in the House that you like to point out to people. We want everybody, of course, to read the book, right. but uh, yes, we want to titillate them a little <laughs> bit about some of the things that they would learn by reading the book. So um, what are some things that you would highlight to people about changes in the House? I think the first thing is how it evolved from what was more of a Republican cast Small R, I don't Small R, mean right. to um, because as, the party. Because as, as Benjamin Franklin said, we are a republic. We are a republic. And how it became a democracy. If you look at the men who were, notice men, who were the members of the first house, they were all right. lawyers, uh, well-to-do um, merchants, uh, planters, and the level, uh, and educated f for the most part, uh, and that uh, reflected what the government, what the people were like in 1787 and 1789. But over the next 20 years, as the country expanded and new states were brought in, in which the uh, uh, suffrage was expanded so that by the time you get to Andrew Jackson in the late 1820s, you have universal white male suffrage. Now, they still have a long way yet to go to include female and non-whites, but it's the first major step of, of the evolution that became the democratic system we have today. And <clears throat> Alexis de Tocqueville came into the house and he was amazed. He said, you look at these people, they come from no place. They represent the wilderness, the frontier, uh, where if you go into the Senate, you, you see you, you, you have more of these men from the uh, uh, eastern states in which they still remain educated from well-to-do families. But the House was becoming increasingly uh, democratic and they noticed this one man by the name of William Sawyer I'll never forget this all he ever did was at one o'clock in the afternoon he went to a window and opened up a package and he had a, a sausage and he would eat the sausage and when he finished it he would crumble it the, the paper that he had in it throw it away and return to his seat and then get up and speak about how he, as a poor uh, a frontiersman, came into this institution and by his presence and by his vote, he could decide how the country would develop. Well, that's very important. And fortunately for us, that is still true. We yeah. know that money plays a great role in people being elected but uh, it isn't the only thing that happens. And I often point out, again, to school children when I talk to them, I grew up in a house with no electricity and no running water. So did my husband. My parents had very little formal education. And it is a great country. I'm not a person of great means. I've worked hard, Second. been able to be educated, but we still have opportunities for those kind of people to serve in right. our House of Representatives. And that's one of the things that sure. I think makes us such a right. great country is that, quote, average people, meaning right. people who are not wealthy, people who don't have ultimate education, but particularly who are not wealthy or born into families uh, that have um, political pedigrees. Uh, can be elected, and, and that's and the strength see, of our country. Right, and your constituents want to know and need to know that you understand their problems exactly. because you have been there. Exactly, and one of the things I say to young people when they talk to me about possibly being in office is I say, go get a real job, <laughs> work and get lots of life experiences yes. because that's what will help you right. be a good representative for our country. Well, I want to tell you that I think that we are extraordinarily fortunate to have you in your position and uh, to know that you're out there constantly working to educate the American public 
on what a wonderful form of government we have and that you continue to provide resources uh, for members of Congress as well as other people. You've done that for us. We had a teacher in Congress program ourselves in our office where we brought a high school teacher up to spend two weeks, and I appreciate what you did. We're out of time, but Dr. Remini, I thank you so much for being with us. This is Congresswoman Virginia Fox with a congressional update.